Garmin Pilot has reached a whole new level of functionality with the release of version 10. The flight planning and routing features have been significantly expanded and now mirror those found in Garmin Avionics systems. With version 10, you have the ability to load and activate departure, arrival, and approach procedures, enter a long track offset waypoints, and even enter altitude constraints to assist with vertical planning. We will review some of the many new features in version 10 in this video and explore others in further videos in this series. Selecting the flight plan button from the home page takes you to a split screen view with a route entry section on the left and a map page on the right. New with version 10 of Garmin Pilot are fields for adding the origin or departure airport, en route waypoints, and a destination airport. This new categorization of waypoints better aligns the application with how pilots think in terms of planning and with how this process is managed with Garmin integrated flight decks. Selecting the Add Origin Airport button brings up a window where you can directly enter the ICAO code for your departure airport or search for it by typing in the name or city. Selecting the Recent tab allows you to choose from a list of recently visited airports and selecting the nearest tab provides a list of airports in ascending order of distance from your current location. This tab is a good one to use when sitting at an airport doing your flight planning, and you can't quite recall the airport code. You should see the airport you're sitting at at the top of the list. A filter at the bottom of this screen lets you filter for only public airports or look at all airports. We'll select KFCM for Flying Cloud Airport as our origin airport. After selecting the origin airport, you will see a cyan action selection on the origin airport line. Selecting actions provides a menu where you can select to see airport information, change or remove the origin airport, add an origin runway, and select a departure procedure. Selecting the add destination airport line, we type Denver in the identifier field and up comes a list of airports in the area of that city. Scrolling through the list, we find Kappa and select that as our destination. Now we have a basic route entered. Okay, now that we've shown you the typical method of entering a departure and destination airport, let's take a look at how we can make these same selections using the tap waypoints feature. First, we select the X in the route line at the top of the screen to remove all waypoints. Now we zoom in the map to our departure airport and tap that airport symbol. Selecting KFCM inserts that airport in the origin airport field. Now we zoom out and pan the map west toward the front range of the Rocky Mountains, and then zoom in on the Denver area. We then place our finger on the map to engage the graphical edit or rubber band mode and drag the circle to Kappa, and it then populates our destination airport field. If you regularly fly departure and arrival procedures, you'll greatly appreciate the next feature we'll take a look at. Selecting the Procedures button from the Origin Airport bar, followed by the Select Departure line, you can see a full list of available procedures. If you already know the particular departure you need to add, you can select it from the list. For those times when you aren't quite sure which procedure to choose, use the Select On Map feature and select the procedure from the recently added color-coded procedure selector. In our example here, we see that the SHEP 9 departure aligns with our course to Centennial, so we select the orange button associated with that procedure. Now the transition selector comes up and the map page zooms in to show the available transitions for the departure. We can see that the ONL transition best aligns with our direction of flight, so we select that, and then touch Load in the upper right corner of the display. Now we select the arrival procedure in much the same manner. Touching the procedure selection on the destination airport bar, we see we have choices for loading both an arrival and an approach. Touching select arrival and then select on map, we can see that the lander nine arrival has the transition closest to our line of flight. So we choose that. Then we select the Yankee transition, which is almost directly on the line of flight. Zooming out on the map display, we can see that this course looks reasonable, so we touch the load button in the upper right corner. 
touching the down arrow on a procedure line in the flight plan to expand the view, all of the waypoints in the procedure can be seen, and we can see any altitude constraints showing in the altitude column. Since we have already confirmed that the route looks reasonable on the map, we slide the map view over to expand the number of data fields available. While the default columns meet most planning needs, columns can be user configured simply by touching the column header and choosing from the long list of options. Here we select cumulative distance and cumulative ETE for view. Note that the altitude column will always display here, but you have selectable values to display here as well. If you wanted to share your flight plan with a co-pilot or a passenger who wishes to monitor the flight, you can select the share icon on the lower left and select to airdrop, text, or email the flight plan. Selecting the reversal icon to the right of the share icon provides an easy means to reverse the course for the return trip, and this action removes any procedures from the original plan. The next icon to the right concerns the route data and charts required for your trip. The green check mark indicates that we have all of the current charts and databases needed to complete the trip. If we saw a yellow triangle here, that would indicate that additional databases should be downloaded before we depart. To the right of the trip package icon are selections for which information to view, with route information currently showing. Selecting PERF allows us to view performance information, and if detailed power setting numbers have been entered for your aircraft, they would appear here. We can also adjust our initial fuel, cruise true airspeed, and cruise burn rate here. Touching Navlog presents detailed information for each waypoint in the flight plan. The warning selection provides the highest obstacle and terrain along your route, and a red triangle and text will appear if a warning exists. Helicopter users can select the Rotorcraft category to see category-specific warnings. To the right of the View selection box is the Create Trip button, which takes you to the trip planning page. We'll hold off on selecting that until we make a few more adjustments to the plan. On the bottom line of the Route Planning section, we can see a Mode Selector, which changes the function of the displayed information. Planning Mode shows calculated information based on the planned values for the flight. The Navigating Mode displays information based on the actual values once airborne, and the active leg is shown with the magenta line and arrow. Selecting a waypoint in the flight plan brings up a menu where you can make adjustments to the flight plan based on the waypoint selected. For example, if instructed to hold inbound at McConnell intersection with five mile legs, you could easily create the hold here. Here we'll bring the map page back into view and then going back to planning mode, we can see the trip distance, required fuel, estimated time en route, and ETA at the destination along the bottom line. Above that, we have a selector for the aircraft for this flight, where you can select from your list of stored aircraft. The next field over to the right is for your departure date and time. It's important to make sure these entries are correct, because in the next field to the right, we have the altitude selector. Selecting this brings up a window of performance information that is based on winds aloft at the time selected in the previous step. Here you can filter altitudes by direction of flight and by type of flight. Looking at the fuel consumption and ETE columns here makes selecting an optimal altitude fairly easy. We'll select 16,000 feet for this flight. Selecting the Create Trip button takes you to the page where you take the final steps before filing your flight plan. We are now ready to ensure we have the right information entered prior to filing. Scrolling down, we take a look at the entries and make any final adjustments, such as departure time and cruise altitude, and ensure we have adequate fuel for the trip. If there was a problem with any of the items, it will highlight in either red or yellow, and a triangle icon will appear on the line. Touching that icon will bring up a plain language explanation of the issue. Once any issues are resolved, we review the nav log. obtain our briefing information, and edit the load sheet for our weight and balance. When all the entries are made on the load sheet, 
we can view the loading situation. Note that you may also access weight and balance by selecting the dedicated icon on the home screen. Once everything is reviewed, all you need to do is select File to file your flight plan. Then select the View on Map button, which takes us to the map page with full featured en route navigation. On the map page, you have a shortcut for making changes to your trip planning. Simply tap on the route line at the top of the display and you will see the trip planning overlay, with the now familiar selections at the bottom of the overlay. The map page includes a host of features available in a split screen view, which we will cover in detail in another video in this series. Please note that your Garmin Pilot development team is constantly looking for ways to improve your experience with this product, and as a result, you may notice some differences between what you observed in this video and what you see in your version of Garmin Pilot. This is a result of the constant improvement process that promises to keep your favorite flight management application on the leading edge. Thank you for taking the time to view this video, and be sure to view the other videos in this series to learn more about specific features of Garmin Pilot.